Hey everybody, Alex here. I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt. Look at me all starting with a quote, isn't that? It's the way to do things, right? Eleanor Roosevelt once said something along the lines of, um, do, do one thing, one thing every day that scares you. One thing every day that pushes you to your edges and heightens, quickens the beating of your heart makes you feel a little bit exposed, a bit vulnerable, a bit uneasy and a bit weird. And most of us, we are moving in the exact opposite of our fears. And one of the big reasons for this, if not the driving, the only reason, is our ego. Now, a lot of people can take this idea the wrong way and sometimes I've been berated for for this in the past. When I say you've got to become aware of your ego, I'm not saying that you have a big ego. I'm not saying that you're arrogant. I'm saying that there is a bundle of thoughts that exists in our heads. Just it's a, a very human thing that, that develops over time. A pattern of thinking that creates a vision in our minds of who we think we are and we want to, there is a side of us that wants to protect that image of who we think we are. We don't want to tarnish it. We don't, we don't want it to be um, negatively affected. We want it to look good. We want to, be, we want to maintain a perfect image. And uh, that's just what thoughts, what our personal thoughts do, what our protective thoughts do. And it's a it's there to, to help us. It's, it's, you know, our egos are there to, to protect us and so on, but overprotection tends to lead to uh, limitation. You know, we limit ourselves massively with, these, with this egoic mind, this personal, rather selfish mind that wants to protect us. I guess in, in that sense, it's sort of selfless, but it's, um, it wants to, protect us from rejection and, and the pains that we've suffered, I suppose, in the past and that kind of thing. And the issue with that is that it tends to keep us limited and rather boxed in in terms of what we, what we end up doing with our lives. We hold back, we avoid things that could potentially present themselves as, as uh, tarnishing that ego. Um, you know, we hold back from reaching out to people because we don't want them to reject us because if they rejected us, it would seemingly lower our self-esteem. It would put a cut right through our ego and it would make us feel bad. And we've been hurt before, so we don't want to do it again. So why on earth would we do something every day, consistently every day, that scares us, that actually, that actually make, prompts a fearful, unpleasant response in us. Don't we, aren't we supposed to live lives of comfort and happiness and joy and peace? Well, this is the thing. I'm sure you've noticed yourself, and I certainly have in my own life, that when I have followed the orders of my ego and I've protected myself, and I have done less that puts me out there, I've done less to rock the boat, I've done less to potentially upset other people and I've done less to um, experience new things and I've done less to create more momentum, more forward mo movement in my businesses and my projects, whether that be in the form of asking someone for help, asking someone for a deal, all the things that tend to lead to personal growth, new relationships, um, surges ahead in our lives, jumps, leaps, all the things that tend to lead to the good things we can be held back from because we're here trying to protect ourselves, we're trying to avoid the pain that we perceive will come from a lot of these things and fear we could see as a kind of a warning flag that comes up in anticipation of those things that might lead to exposing ourselves for the frauds that we think we are. 
that's our ego talking again. Our ego is actually full of beratement, full of negativity and full of self-suppression. Your ego is the one that simultaneously is trying to protect you, but it protects you, unfortunately, by keeping you down and telling you that you are limited and potentially even stupid. And so of course you wouldn't want to do anything in your life of any substance if you believed your ego. If you believed the words that your ego was telling you that you are limited and that you are just the way you are, you know, you're, you have this personality, you tell yourself this story that's, that's kind of erupted and expanded from that moment someone said something harsh to you at school, in the classroom, they said this about you, that you, that you weren't very funny or that you were dumb, stupid. You know, you can take that stuff to heart and your ego builds stories out of these little threads and creates lim limitation in your life. Now, why am I suggesting that we do scary things? Well, for one thing, scary things tends to mean that you are rebelling, in a sense, against the limitations that you are imposing on yourself. It's like you've said to yourself, you know what, I'm not going to believe this. Just for a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suspend disbelief for a minute and say, I'm not taking this crap anymore, okay? I'm going to do this, I'm going to prove to myself that I am capable of doing things that are at a higher level than I normally constrict myself to. I'm going to prove to myself and the world that I am a capable, limitless human who can throw themselves off the side of a mountain on skis, who can approach that good looking girl, who can start that business when the only voice in your head is telling you you're an idiot and you can't do it. When you lean into your fears and you take action in the direction of what's uncomfortable and scary, you are rebelling against those ideas in society and in your own mind that say you can't. And that's invigorating because when you break through it and you do the thing and you look back on what happened, and you look back on the, on the fact that you survived and life went on even though you did it and you immersed yourself in something new and you, and you added a new experience to your list of experiences, it feels fantastic. And you know why it feels fantastic? Because for that moment, you're connected to who you really are, which is unlimited energy that manifests itself through all things. I know this sounds a little bit out there for some, but we're essentially these walking meat sacks that contain the energy that flows through everything. You are one instance of universal energy captured in a human form and when we head out into the world and we do stuff that feels painful it feels painful to our um to our kind of uh reptile selves but it's exactly what your internal intelligent and wise self wants for you because it knows that that is you and you are for a moment connecting with the real you in doing the things that are scary. And so what's really powerful about this is that when we see it this way, we realize that scariness, that feeling of fear, isn't fear at all. It's a flag of excitement, of buzzing energy that is indicating to you that this is the thing to do. This is going to be a doorway for you to reconnect with who you really are. And so when I say do one thing every day that scares you, I'm basically saying do one thing every day that energizes you because you know that you're gonna be connecting and living your true self, your uninhibited, 
un-ego incentivized overthinking mess of a self. You are sidetracking that and you're doing something and you're starting to build this into your reality. Every time you do something scary, every time you do anything, every time you take action essentially and you honor that and you and you do the thing, you are in integrity with your energy, your energy self, your non-ego, I can do this, I am spirit self. And the more of that you can do, the more your spirit and sense of aliveness is gonna grow. You've seen it for yourself, whenever you've done something frightening and you kind of committed to it and you walked up to that person and you called that person up, whatever, you started a project, you finished it, you didn't want to do it, you, you showed up every day. Whenever you've done that, you've felt good. So that's, that's a big thing. And the other thing is, um, by doing this kind of thing with consistency every day, you are getting ahead. You are taking on one of the most underspoken, biggest unfair advantages of creating incredible things in your life. Most people are holding back, they're scared, they're avoidant, they're doing what, uh, what their parents um, encourage them to, to do more of and you know hold back and, and to stay safe. And with safety comes company. When you are playing safe, there's gonna be a whole lot of people who are also with you staying on that safe route, uh, mumbling about you know, how crappy the weather is and how unexciting their lives are because they have stayed in the penned in garden of safety. You can choose to jump the fence occasionally and step out because that is where advantage is to be had. That is where surges in your life will happen. That's where the biggest leaps are to be found because no one, no one else is there. So have conversations with people who are up there. Find people to talk to who can open you up to new networks who might be scary initially to approach. The reason it's scary is a good, is a good reason because it's gonna expand you and it's also gonna open you up to a territory that very few people are, are visiting. Um, in another video, I think I'm gonna close off on this one. I'm gonna go into a little bit more on the idea of uh, a, a common, well, not, not particularly common, but a lot of people might say, well, you once said, Alex, that um, to be at peace and to be happy, you, didn't, you don't need to look elsewhere. You don't need to look outside of you. You can already summon that happy, happiness and joy and peace within you. And that's absolutely true. We are already whole. We are already full to the brim, we are already happy. And in that sense, we don't need to get anything from anywhere else. Losers need a reason to be happy, winners don't. And so what I'd say to that is, yes, that's true. You can reduce a lot of suffering in your life by stilling the mind and getting the ego out of things. But at the same time, I believe that really living is to be in continual motion and continual uh, growth. So I, I think that yes, you can be at peace, but I think that will be short-lived if you are staying still and meditating all day. It, it's gonna, it's gonna have its toll. You're just, you're not gonna be able to hold it. People might want to argue about this with me, but I think that peace. It's not only to be found in the mind alone. There is movement and expression of that peace that needs to be coupled with that. And that means moving into areas that you haven't been before. Not necessarily geographically, but just doing things that push you a little bit. Open for debate. Feel free to share your ideas on this in the comments. I wanna know one thing. What are you doing today that's a little bit out of your comfort zone? Call to action as well, on top of this, is to, I encourage you to write down a list. Maybe it's five things, maybe it's 20 things of things that you know would help you, grow you and make your life better if you did them, but they scare you. Write them down. What are those things that, sc what are the, that are scary? 
and then book them in the calendar, put them down, have them actually make, you know, co- make them concrete, have them start to happen and, and, and tick them off your list and do them. You'll start to see tremendous changes happening in your life. Um, for me, I think one of the things I'm going to do tomorrow that I'm going to, that's a little bit scary is to, um, I'm going to go skiing on a, diff- a different slope. I'm still a beginner and it's a little bit out of town and I've got to take a, uh, I guess taking a taxi isn't exactly scary, but, but I'm sort of moving into a new area of skiing, a new slope. Maybe it's a little bit steeper and um, pushing myself a little bit on the slopes. And uh, that, that's, that's going to be the one thing for me. What, what's it for you? would love to hear your thoughts. Do like this video if you liked it. I know this has gone on for, for quite long, but I thought I, want, I wanted to give it justice. And um, yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Love you guys. Peace out.